60 Minutes Overtime. If you could speak to the people you're trying to represent, those in these vanishing graveyards, what would you tell them? I would tell them that their lives mattered and that their lives still matter today. And although we cannot change what happened to them, we can certainly try to right those wrongs present day by acknowledging the wrong that happened to them and committing our present day resources and faculties to making sure that nothing like this ever happens again. Our story this week that we call Grave Injustice is about African American cemeteries from the days of segregation being ignored and lost over history. Cemeteries that we found had been paved over by parking lots, even an elementary school built on top of one of them. Clearwater, Florida has discovered two of these segregated African American cemeteries that began in the early part of the 20th century. Each of them has hundreds of grave sites. And the city said back in the 50s that it would move the bodies so that development could occur in that part of town. What has been discovered in recent years is that the bodies were not moved. Uh, the vast majority of the hundreds of bodies remained in place and then the development occurred over the top of them. At the historic St. Matthew's Baptist Church, we asked a number of residents of Clearwater to come sit with us and tell us about their memories of these cemeteries. These were people who had loved ones that were buried in those cemeteries who have now been lost. We met Lois Bell, who has records that her grandmother was buried at one of these cemeteries, but there is no record of her grandmother ever having been moved. People like my father who uh, had someone buried there. It's like their history was lost. It's like the lollipops have been taken from their mouths and they can't taste the sweetness of their, their you know, youth. So to give him some type of closure, hopefully before he expires, would be great. But at the same time, this was a school where a lot of the blacks actually attended the school. And to disturb that, will be actually disturbing the graves again. One of the people that we met in the church was a woman named Diane Stevens. She's a lifelong resident of Clearwater who remembers growing up in the area. I grew up on Missouri Avenue in the North Greenwood area, right there near where the school is and, and the burial grounds. And when I was smaller, the rain, when it would saturate the ground, bones would come up and we would go out there and so my parents would tell us to uh, just leave them there. They're looking, they're looking for their uh, descendants and they're looking for a resting place. So my parents would always tell us about that. So it was, um, it was a lesson because you had older people talking and telling us about you know, our history and about what was going on. The work that's being done in Florida has discovered effaced and erased African-American cemeteries really all over the state. And so one state representative by the name of Fentress Driscoll introduced a bill that would create a state agency that would help find these locations and figure out some way to memorialize them for future generations. Her bill passed in the Florida House, but it did not pass in the Florida Senate. So this state agency that she's proposed has not been created yet, but she intends to keep going. What are the next steps in the legislature and what do you ultimately hope to have? Well, House Bill 1215 is a great bill and we were hoping to establish the Office of Historic Cemeteries in the Florida Department of State to really have state resources dedicated to looking into these issues to address particularly the challenging issue of what happens when a cemetery is discovered under private property because Florida has very strong private property rights. So being able to look into that to see if maybe the state could have an easement to go onto the property and using unobtrusive means like ground penetrating radar to discover whether or not there are graves there. Those are the sorts of things that we're trying to accomplish with House Bill 1215. It passed through all of its committee stops in the House unanimously. Unfortunately, it did not pass in the Senate. 
So we'll come back and fight that battle another legislative session. You're going to come back another time. That's right. Sometimes you have to go back to the well more than once.